Before we start, it's important to note that not everybody is meant to open their third eye in this current lifetime. However, everybody has that potential to do so. And the thing is, sometimes it takes multiple lives to work up to opening their third eye or go through an awakening. So with that being said, let's crack into it. <laughs> Sometimes it's not in a person's lesson plan, aka life's blueprint, to you know go through an awakening or open their third eye. And that's okay. Not everybody's meant to do that. It may seem depressing to some, especially if you're somebody that already has their third eye open and are awakened, and you want your loved one to do the same thing, but you know, they're just not getting there sometimes. It's for their own protection because sometimes when people go through an awakening and open their third eye, you know, they can get some abilities along with that and not everybody is able to handle it. You know, sometimes these abilities may come through as mental illness. Like they look like mental illness, like clairvoyance can look like schizophrenia. Some people might not be able to handle the things that they're seeing and the information they're absorbing, which is why it is important to understand what one is getting into before going down this journey. And if you're somebody who's looking to open their third eye and become more awakened or attuned to everything that's going on, chances are, you know, you were meant to go down that path in the first place. It's always important to understand what you're getting into. And I always say researching something before you actually do something is very important. So then you know what you're getting yourself into. It's very important to understand expectation versus reality because people will go through an awakening and not even realize it because they had this unrealistic expectation of what it would be like. And uh, yeah, they don't even notice because they're thinking it's one way when it's not. Not everybody who opens their third eye becomes a psychic or a medium. Opening your third eye will shift your consciousness and your awareness, which will allow you to gain a deeper insight of yourself, others, you know, other cultures, the world around you. As one develops their higher level of perception in accessing their higher wisdom due to enhancing one's inner intuition, insight, and spiritual awareness. Which is why I always say to try to research it because, you know, you don't want to have that false reality of expectation, you know, getting in your way of your growth. So I'm going to give you 15 ways someone can open their third eye and or become awakened because I kind of lumped those two together. Number one. Meditation. I always say meditation is key. It's it's pretty much the most important thing a person can do. Observe your thoughts. Observe everything that enters into your mind. Meditation isn't your typical, you know, close your eyes and, I don't know, with your legs crossed or whatever. Meditation can be whatever you want it to be. It could be in the form of exercise, art. It could just be your stereotypical, like, ohm stuff. It could be, I don't know, reading, writing. I do a lot of writing meditations and drawing meditations, along with the stereotypical, like, ohm, well, minus the ohm part. But you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. Another way you can work on opening your third eye is through visualization. You can literally, and you could do this through meditation, it could be a visualization type of meditation, or it could just be a visualization, you know, technique where you could sit there and envision your pineal gland 
like bursting with bright white light and becoming more receptive to wisdom and intuition. Number three, be mindful. So practice mindfulness. Be aware of everything around you because the more you pay attention, honestly, I mean, you'll gain more experiences and your spirit guides will have something to refer to when trying to give you information. So the more you know about how the world works, about other cultures, about yourself, about your surroundings, the better you will be. Number four, energy work. Working on the body's energy systems like chakras and meridians and, you know, cleansing them out of negative energy. Focus on activating and balancing them through Reiki, acupuncture, acupressure. Number five, research. I kind of already mentioned that a few times, but the more you know, the better you'll be. Because again, you wanna know what you're getting into, what it's actually like through other people's experiences, because what they show you in the media isn't necessarily true. And they try to dramatize things just to keep the viewer's attention, even if it's not true. Six, crystals. You can use crystals to open your third eye or help you open your third eye. You can do it in combination with meditation. Sometimes, you know, just to cleanse out your third eye, you can put like black obsidian or black tourmaline on your third eye because sometimes it gets a little blocked. Even if you are awakened and have your third eye open, it's always good to do that anyway to cleanse it out. And like the first few times when you do it, it will feel weird. Sometimes you'll feel a popping, I don't know, feeling, um, a prickle or like pressure. It depends on the person because not everyone will be the same. Number seven, aromatherapy. You can try that. Um, usually things that produce positive energy, I recommend, or calmness. Number eight, dream journaling. Okay, y'all, I'm going to be honest. Dream journaling is the second most, I don't know, for me it worked with meditation. Like those are the top two for me that worked. Again, everyone's different, but dream journaling, the more you are able to recall, the better you will be because not every single dream is a dream. And sometimes it's an astral realm experience. And yeah, you get a lot of information that way, believe it or not. So it's always good to record that stuff. Not only that, um, when you do meditations or you try to channel, you're going to wanna write that stuff down anyway because it comes so fast, like a dream, right? You ever notice like when you wake up some dreams, like you'll remember it and then a split second later, it'll be gone. That's how channeling can be as well. And so it's always important to write that stuff down. But not only that, you can validate things that have come true. Because if you don't, you're going to question, did I have a dream about that? I think I did, but you're never going to be sure because you never wrote it down. Number nine, intuitive exercises. Now, there are apps that you can get on your phone for free. And you can literally do these intuition games where you practice just picking things based off of your intuition. Number 10, patience and self-care. You got to take care of your mind, body, and spirit, okay? Your mental health, your physical health is very important. Your spiritual health is also important. And patience. You know, I didn't get where I am overnight. It took me, what, two to three years of, like, meditation every single day? And those meditations were, like, two to three hours. Not only that, I recorded every single dream in my dream journal and I was able to go back and study them and figure out what was what. Was it an entity? Was it a dream? What was going on? Like the meanings behind everything. Number 11, not many people talk about this, but when you start caring more about other people, when you become empathic and you care about other people and you're willing to help other people, unconditionally without anything in return you do it out of love that's when you know you'll be able to 
understand the perspectives of other people and it'll just be easier to connect. Number 12, ask your guides to open it, to teach you lessons, to help you become awakened and so on and so forth. That's one thing that I also did too. Like I would get to certain points and then I would feel stagnant in my growth and then at that point I'd be like, hey, spirit guides, can you please like, um, teach me something else, teach me something new, help me grow some more because I want to keep going. And every time I asked, they delivered. So it's very important you ask because if you don't ask, they're not going to help you because it's like they don't have that permission. They just, you just have to ask. Now I do have three extra ones on the list, but these ones are more out of a person's control. And I don't ever recommend doing these on purpose because it's dangerous. And sometimes like these happen as a result of something like traumatic or dangerous. So never purposely put yourself in that kind of situation. Get it, got it good. Number 13, near death experience. Uh, sometimes when people have a near death experience, they can start seeing dead people. That's just how that shit happens. It's just like part of the plan of their life's lesson plan. And, you know, they also gain experience on the other realms, but also they get experience with the other frequencies. But typically that's part of a lesson plan for them. So it's kind of like they don't have direct control over it in like the current life body that they're in now it's something that they would have planned out before they were reincarnated onto this earth number 14 a traumatic haunting or just a haunting yo let me be real the whole reason i'm in this where i am right now is because of the haunting that i was traumatized by and you know it's not something that i want people to have to experience and it's because of the haunting that I am helping people as much as I can. Um, at the peak part of my haunting, I didn't even know I was a medium. And that's why it affected me so much is because I had these medium abilities and didn't know it. And I'm like, what is going on? Why am I seeing a freaking alien looking, predator looking thing pacing around my bed? Like what's going on? And yeah. So, or being dragged off my bed by my ankle at like three o'clock in the morning. Uh, yeah, traumatic as F, okay? So typically those who suffer a traumatic haunting typically go through some kind of awakening and it has to do more of being put in a traumatic situation that makes you question or throw out all your current beliefs. It's like everything you knew, you don't know shit. Everything you knew isn't what you know because there's way more out there than what you can learn in school, by your parents, by research, science. Some shit can't be explained by science, hence why it's called the paranormal or supernatural or preternatural. It's like all this shit that science cannot explain, but you experience it. And you're like, okay, well, rationally, I can't debunk this because I was being dragged off my bed by something invisible, but like, it's invisible, so how do I rationalize that? Like, you can't. And so it just puts your beliefs out the, the window and you're just, you're lost. I'm not going to lie. You're going to be lost if that's how you uh, experience your awakening. Some people wake up one day with a mental fucking breakdown because everything they thought they knew, you know, like I said previously, it's like they just wake up one day and are like, oh my God, I see this, this, and this. This is the truth. It's not what I thought previously. Oh my God. And because they don't know how to handle that information, they just lose their shit, essentially. And then number 15, I was born this way. Just kidding. No, but seriously, some people are just born that way. Some people are born with a higher perception, higher, you know, awareness. And that's because, you know, in their past lives, they've worked up to get to that point. And it's part of their lesson plan. 
So, yeah, those are like the 15 tips or ways one can open their third eye. Hopefully, you know, this gave people insight. Let me know if you have any thoughts, questions, concerns down below, or if I missed one, let me know. Did I miss one? Because I probably did. Because I ain't perfect. Because I'm just a human. I'm a human. I'm a soul going through a human experience. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow, tomorrow. There's always tomorrow. Peace. If you like these types of videos, I highly recommend watching the video where I talk about astral projection and what it's all about.